Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and today I shall be looking at The Four Treasures by Harapan Ong. Before we do this, can you please like and subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com, that's my online card magic course, and it's very, very good, but don't take my word for it, have a look at it, see what's on it, and read the testimonials, go to cardmagiccourse.com if you would like to learn from a pro, if you love this channel, you will love that course, it's huge, so have a look at that, um, and do share it if you fancy doing that, if you like these reviews, and I don't mean you have to share it all over social media, just tell people about it, because that's kind of the, the best thing really, so... Uh, if you know anybody that like it, let them know. Right. This, oh, uh, very quickly, if you want a free course on the spread cull, go to cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull, C-U-L-L. Free course on the best moving card magic, if you ask me. Right, I'm done with all that now. Let's get on with this. This is a, a big Harapan Ong fan. Oh, one of the first books I reviewed, one of the first ones was uh, Principia, which I absolutely loved. I still love it. I just think he's one of those magicians that, that walks the line between stuff that looks slick and smart and flashy but not too flashy and he uses all these lovely moves and slights and sometimes flourishes in really good context in good solid ways to present cards i really like his stuff it's it's just perfect for me really uh, it's just challenging enough to kind of get you get your teeth into but not, not it's all pretty doable uh and I didn't know anything about this. I saw he was releasing something. He sent it to me, which was wonderful. And I was felt a, a tinge of joy when I realised it was four tricks. So this is a, a, a book of four routines, which is great for me because it means I can actually get the cards out and learn them. And, and you get the gimmick cards with it. So this is the, the idea is that he talks about, and he did touch on this in Principia, that you get these, these four extra cards, you get two jokes and two advertising cards, you usually end up chucking them away, but there's space now for four other things. And he says that in custom decks, you often get like a double backer and all that kind of stuff, but he goes, if, if you had any four cards to replace those cards that you got rid of, what would they be? So he gives you these four gimmicks and then tells you how to use them and gives you one example of how to use each one. The Four Treasures, by the way, comes from the essential items in Chinese calligraphy, and that's where he's drawn that from. And, and so he's kind of saying, I suppose, that these are, you know, out of all the gaffes, these are the essential ones. And it's great for me because I don't use gaff cards very often, so I don't, obviously, I know the basics of, of what I would do with them, but he, he gives you ways here of using them that isn't what I expected. I thought it would be very challenging, very, like I said, kind of... F slick stuff and it is slick but it's all practical these routines are all reminding me of classic routines you know there's nothing too complex in here and and actually most of them i'd say because i'd see myself as an intermediate card handler i could do them straight away as i kind of read them i couldn't remember them necessarily but i could do the slights involved so that gives you an idea of, of kind of where we are skill-wise. I would say intermediate, you know, you've got to know double lift. There is a Stuart Gordon turnover in there, um, but there's nothing too difficult. And, and of course, you know, if you think about it, you could substitute a lot of those moves. But I would say again that the moves are all justified. You know, even a Stuart Gordon turnover, if you know what that is, kind of double lift, you know, it's there for a reason because of the way you display the card and, and what you do with the pack as you're displaying that card. So with all these routines as well, it, and, and he always does this, every moment is thought about, you know, when you show this, you, you count this and, and he, he, he feels like someone and reads like someone who has done these routines. And of course he has, because actually when you get to the back, there's videos of the routines you can watch, which is really nice as well. So I run through the routines. The first one is called, I always forget the names, um, I, I do that with music as well, Centre of Attention. Lovely, great start for me because I do love an Elmsley Count trick. I love a sort of twist in the aces trick and this is a twist in the aces is trick but it's because it uses this one card, no it doesn't use one card, it uses four but one of them is a thing, thingy card. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Uh, You've only got four cards there, so it's almost it's easier. I wouldn't say it's easy because you've still got to do the moves, but it feels so clean. You've got four aces. One of the aces keeps turning face up when you put it in a couple of times face down, and then you've got this kicker ending where one ace changes place with three other aces. So I love those tricks where you get you think you've got three cards and it becomes one, and then the one becomes three, and it's 
really nice and I found this quite easy to do. There's a couple of moments I realised, weirdly enough, that I had a terrible pinky count when I had a small pack. I pinky count all the time, but and you don't have to do a pinky count, but I wanted to learn that. And actually, this made me go back and sit there for a few hours just doing a pinky count with three cards. And it was... It, I liked how it made me go back to basics. I've been talking about this a lot, just to clean these routines up. And, and again, when you've got four tricks to work on, you kind of tend to do that more. You go, right, now I really want to get that polished. And, and it, you haven't got that overwhelming thing of having like 200 tricks. So that's a great trick. I have performed that and it's, it's just a beauty, really easy to follow. Um, if you have talked about before I do maxi twist, I think twisting the aces routines do get a super strong response to from lay people, as all of these have because I've done them all. The second trick is hand to pocket and super simple in concept. And again, most of you will be able to do, if you're card workers, sorry, will be able to do this straight away. It's a very simple, they choose a card, they sign the card, they put the card, the card is put face down on their hand. You then put the deck face up on top of that card very cleanly and all of a sudden you turn the whole deck over, the card's vanished, that face down card, and it's in your pocket. Great, you know, you can't get more clean than that. And there's this moment, and again, I have performed this, there's this moment where they're looking at, the, they know it's there, and there's this beautiful misdirection built in that just, there's a move you kind of have to do, which isn't difficult, but is kind of bold for those of you that aren't versed in that move. And because of the, you, you can get away with murder. It's just like you've got all that time again because the routine you thought about. It's like they're going to be looking here. We're going to be doing that thing. And it's the moment it vanishes from the hand is a really big moment. And then it's in your pocket. So again, absolutely stunning. Loved it. Performed it straight away. Brilliant. The next one, indicated transposition, which is Again, like all of them, I just absolutely love it. It's got a proper kicker in it that feels like a kicker and it's genuinely surprising. You uh, get two cards chosen out of the pack. You say, well, we're going to find them. You go through the pack and one card is turned face up. So you take that card out, you put it down, uh, turn it face down. You, it's a three, so you go, we count three cards and we'll find the next card. You count three cards, you turn that one face up from the pack and realise it's the card you've just shown, which is the other card you pick up the other card and it's turned into the second spectator's card. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, there'll be video anyway. Uh, but it, a, a lovely moment. Again, super, super crisp. And the one moment in it that you would be worried about is completely covered just with timing, misdirection, all that kind of stuff anyway. Again, not a difficult uh, trick to do. A little bit bold, but once you've done it once or twice, and as I have, you're going to feel really comfortable with it. And then the last one is punch back, which is a great sandwich trick. And I've just tried two times to explain this uh, as I'm looking at camera. I just find it really hard to explain. I don't know why, but there'll be video. But basically, it's a wonderful sandwich trick that ends up, you find one selection between two kings, and then go, right, we'll put that down on the table face down. Now we'll find your selection to the second spectator. You find that, but it ends up being actually the same card as the first spectators. And what they're expecting at this point is for the two cards to transpose. But what actually transposes are the two kings that you've used as the sandwich cards with the two selections. That won't make any sense probably, but you'll see uh, in the visuals hopefully. So you've got four really lovely tricks that I went straight out and did and thought I'd easily do them uh, in my card set without any question. They're just brilliant, as is all Harapan stuff. I just think it's great. Uh, like I said, most if you're if you're handy with a deck of cards, you're gonna um, be able to do these. I had to practice a bit of the handling. If you're not, it's a really good way uh, introduction to gaff cards and you'll be able to adapt them. And I also think it's a good goal. I think you should always try and sort of work a little bit out of your ability. And these aren't, like I said, they're not knuckle busted and they give you good justification for learning those slides other than they look cool. Uh, they're, like I said, that Stuart Gordon is all there for a reason. So really loved it, really recommended it. A beautiful book as well. The photos are wonderful. Everything's clear as day in there and it's the, the font, everything. It's just been designed within, within an inch of its life, which I often say, um, and just, just lovely. So there it is, The Four Treasures, Harapan Ong. Uh, all the links will be below. Do use them, please. And Harapan, thank you so much for sending me that. Have a great one. Please like, subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com and uh, enjoy.